is solving problems using algebraic modeling. I don't know if that word gets used in grade nine as much as it should. Modeling means we're going to take this math that we know how to do now. Hopefully, if I give you two equations with two unknowns, you're like, okay, I got a chance. Depending on how hard it is, I should be okay. And we're going to try to apply it to real world situations. So I'm going to put beside modeling, these are going to be word problems. They're not going to look like math when they start. We've got to get them over to math. Or if you want, we're going to try and do some real life stuff. Now people get very upset about this because the real life examples I do might not seem real life. It's getting ready for the real life ones is what we're going to do. That is, after this year, next year you might have signed up for things like chemistry, business, technology, biology, physics, so all those things, that's when you'll get the real world examples. So we do some like practice real world examples, sort of like what you're going to see. So don't get stressed out that these word problems don't seem as real as they should be. We'll get to those. We'll get to those once you learn a little more in whatever field you're thinking about. Anyways, model a linear system. Model. That is, take a real world situation and try to get it over to what we've been doing and solve using an algebraic method. Steps to solving. Well, again, I don't know. Maybe this should be at the end. This time I will talk about it up front. Here's what we want to accomplish in these word problems. Write a let statement to identify the unknowns in the problem and assign variables to them. I'm going to talk all about that. Why would we want to use let statements? I'm going to tell you. Clearly define what each variable represents in the context of the problem. And if you're like, this is the part I'm bad at. These word problems have always drove me nuts. Wait till you see. I've got some, I got some tricks. I, I'm not, I have no sleeves on today, but I've got some tricks up my sleeve. So I'm like, well, why don't you try this? Here, why don't you try this? Translate the given information into mathematical equations. That's the very tough part. Each equation should represent a different aspect of the problem. Then after that, you should be happy. After that, we'll choose substitution or elimination and we'll solve in the, in the way we've done before. Question number three and after, that's what we've been doing all chapter. Getting ready for this moment that once we build an equation, we can use three, four, and five to solve it. But again, lots of examples coming. Although there's a couple of principles that we should keep in mind as we get going. So I don't have to explain them on the fly. Let's just talk about a couple of things that you'll need to know. Money and percentages. Uh, money, always write the denominations for money in dollars. Uh, yeah, I think you'll find it less confusing to go dollars than go to cents. Could you go to cents? Yes, I think so. But dollars usually works better for most people. So for instance, quarters are worth $0.25. Is that okay? $0.25. If we're going to work in dollars, we have to think of quarters as 0 0.25, not 25. And dimes, we'll have to think of as 0 0.10. And nickels will be 0 0.05. How did I get those decimals? What, like if someone says, well, no, quarters are 25 cents. What are you doing to me here? How do you get from 25 to 0 0.25? What have I done there? Yeah, this is all just divide by 100. Could there be a word problem where you're like, no, no, I did the word problem all in cents. Yep, you could. But most times dollars are better. And the percentages, divide them by 100, friends. That's literally what, I don't know if you know this. See this symbol? It literally tells you to divide. It's got a divide symbol down the middle. It says divide by what? Zero, zero. Maybe you didn't know that, that those are zeros. There's also a symbol for divide by 1,000, which has a zero and two zeros underneath. So we're divide by 1,000. We don't use it very often. But that's what that symbol is really telling you to do. So when you do these, don't try and do them in your head. In the middle of doing a word problem and substitution and elimination and grade 10 math, take a second and just type these in. 27.5 divided by 100 equals 0 0.275. That one sometimes messes people up. When there's decimals in the percent, it's tough to do mental math. Most people get this one. When they do 80 divided by 100, they know that one's 0 0.80 or 0 0.8. Having that zero there doesn't change its value. But most people mess this one up. 
because they forget to divide by 100 and they don't write 0 0.08. My advice to you, this chapter, is even if you were great at percentages before you got here, for this chapter, just make sure you type min divided by 100. You got enough problems with the word problems and the substitution and the elimination. Type them in, okay? Good. That's just the setup for, this, for these word problems. All right. Right into example one. I forget how many examples there is, but they're just going to escalate as they go. So I'm going to establish a method. Now this method, you may think you don't need. That is, you may go zip through all these word problems and say, Mr. Todd, he's crazy. There's no reason to use his method. I'm telling you, word problems just keep getting worse and worse. At some point in your life, you're probably going to want my method. And I call it the three guess method. When a word problem messes you up, take three guesses at it, and by the end of three guesses, the algebra might become clear. Okay? Let's try this one. And let's act like most TV shows act like. Most TV shows act like a problem like this is just impossible. How could you possibly sort out what's going on? And I'll try and sort it out for you. It says the sum of two numbers is 45. So whatever the two numbers are, when you add them together, you get 45. And then it says three times the larger minus two times the smaller number equals 35. Determine the two numbers. I'll tell you, I know what the main problem is with questions like this. Some of you are so used to seeing through the math, every lesson you just go, oh, I know the answer. You don't have to do the steps because you're like, I know what's going on here. Yeah? And then a problem like this comes along where it's not that easy. It's too complicated to try and keep track of everything that's going on. So watch my three guess method. I go over to a separate sheet of paper and I take three guesses. Here's guess one. You're just going to guess at the answer? Mr. Todd, my grade 8 teacher said, no more guessing at the answers. I'm like, oh, I'm not really going to use my guesses. I'm just trying to figure out what the heck is going on here. Go back to my question. I go, okay, what could the two numbers be? If they add to 45, what could the two numbers be? 30 and? 30 and 15. His first guess is 30 and 15. Okay, is this a great way to do the question? No, no, no friends. By the end of this page here, I'm going to build the algebra. The algebra is going to come out of this in just a second. He says 30 and 15. What is it about 30 and 15? He knows 30 plus 15 equals 45. That's why his guess is a decent one. I don't know if it's a good one. And if we happen to get, the, if we happen to get it right here, that's just pure luck. I, I don't even know what the answer is. So that's just pure luck. So if it's going to be right, and here, if, you've, if, you've, if you haven't quite woke up yet today, this is the big moment of the guess method. Because some of you, after seeing the guess method, might be like, I don't need three guesses. One guess is going to do it. Once I do one guess, I'll be home free. The other part of the question says, three times the larger minus two times the smaller equals 35. If this is going to work, then three times the larger was it minus? Minus two times the smaller what's it supposed to come out to? equals 35. If it's right, it's going to come out to 35. Maybe he's right. Maybe he got it right off the bat. 30 and 15. Is it right? 3 times 30 is 90. Minus 2 times 15 is 30. And he's not right. Now listen, if your brain's gone haywire and you're here going, are you out of your mind? What is it you're doing up there today? That's not the way to do these questions. Stay with me. Trust I have a plan to, make, to bring this home. Um, what I do want you to hopefully agree is, using this method, this just guessing method, getting the answer, like if there's three word problems in the test, I might not even get one done. This is not going to go well. This could take forever. Okay? I'll do guess two. And after guess two, 
I'm going to try and do the algebra. I'm not going to go all the way to three guesses because I don't want you to believe you have to do three guesses. When I call it the three guess method, I sort of mean like, well, try three guesses until you, you get the algebra. I'm up to some color coding though. I hope you can see. I'm up to something with the color coding. Someone else got a guess of what the two numbers could be? 20 and 25. She says 20 and 25. I'm going to put the bigger number first only because it fits with the organization I'm doing. Okay? So she says maybe it's 25 plus 20. She knows that works. If it's going to work, I got to go three times the larger. Minus two times the smaller. And that's got to come out to thirty-five. Does it? Three times twenty-five is seventy-five minus four. It's it is right. Did you know it was going to be right? How did you know? You already solved it how? Oh, I got to see this. Because I, I don't want to lie. I want to tell you exactly what she did. Yep, she built the equation. So she already knew what the answers were going to be. OK, that's fine. This is enough. I'm going to try to use just two guesses here. Because I don't want you. I, I know I wrote three guess method. It may take three guesses. It, one guess might be enough to go, here the, comes the algebra. My first question for my let statement. I'm going to go back and forth here between the two pages. What are the two unknowns? After all that, what are the two things I'm trying to come up with in the question? Yeah, the two numbers. So that's what you, all you need to do. When you first read these questions, your first move is go, what am I looking for here? And so I'm going to call them x and y. I could use different letters if I wanted, but just so it's familiar with previous examples, I go, let x equal the larger number. That's what they were saying in the note was be very specific about what your two let statements are because it's going to help you. Then let y equal the smaller number. Sometimes teachers tell you this is about good communication. Well, it might be good communication. I think there's something more important here. I now am ready to do algebra. Now I go back and look at my guesses. My guess is tell me exactly what to do with the algebra. The greens were the x's. The reds were the y's. Those were my two guesses. What, does, what do these two variables have to satisfy? Look at that first one. What has to happen with those two variables, with the x and the y? What equation has to be true if they're going to add to 45? x plus y equals 45. So if you're right with me on the guess method, you're like, oh, you weren't trying to guess at all. You were just trying to go, what am I going to do with these numbers if the algebra is not making sense to me? But the first equation has got to be x plus y equals 45. And when you write that, hopefully you write it with happiness. As you're writing that, you're like, modeling, there's a moment in modeling where it's like, ha, ah, that looks like what we've been doing. I can handle that. Who wants a shot at the second equation? Just stare at the second equation on each pair and go, what did I do with these two numbers? Yeah. And if that is a little much for you, hopefully at least you went, you've got a plan now. It's not just randomly picking x's and y's and algebra out of the air. And maybe some questions you don't need to guess at all. You're like, oh, I know this one. But when they do get tough, Go to the guess method. You're like, oh, what would I do with these numbers? Because that's, that's all these are. These x and y's are just numbers. We just don't know what they are is the problem. <clears throat> Sorry, I coached hockey all weekend. And yelling at seven-year-olds is hard in your voice, let me tell you. I don't yell at them. They can't hear me if I don't yell, great shot, way to go. So I'm yelling really loud from the bench. All right. Boy, you really should celebrate. 
and savor what you've accomplished and write a smiley face with it. Because if you've been keeping up with your homework and you're on top of substitution elimination, at that moment you're like, ah, whoo, it's going to be okay. Step one, label the two equations. And now in this lesson you've got your choice. You can do substitution, you can do elimination, whichever one you like. We're going to take the first suggestion. Whatever. He says elimination. We're going to take the first suggestion. You're like, I do substitution on this one. Okay, I'm going to do elimination. But why is it that substitution would be okay for this one? What is it about these equations that make it that substitution will work very nicely? You multiply the first equation by two, and you can eliminate the Okay, he's, he's still on elimination. He is focused on elimination. Uh, he's like, uh, yeah, but if, you, if someone said to you, I'm going to do elimination. I I'm going to take the first suggestion. But if someone said to you, do it by eliminate substitution. If they did say to do it by substitution, why is this one not bad? Yeah, x and y are both, they don't have coefficients, so isolating them is not going to be too bad. I must tell you, I'm an elimination person. You've got to almost force me to do substitution. Me personally. But you do what you want. You do you. Guaranteed on the test there'll be one where it's like, do this by substitution. I have to ask you to do one of them by substitution. And there'll be another question like, do this one by elimination. The other questions, I'm like, hey, whatever, whatever, whatever works. He already told me what to do there. He said, take the first equation and multiply it by 2. Uh, and I said 2 there. And I said first equation there, but I didn't write first equation. Equation 1 by 2. He did that really fast. He knew right away what to do. And he's not doing anything with equation 2. And even if you didn't know what to choose there. Take a look at that and someone please tell me why he's right. Why that will work. It's all lined up. 2y and negative 2y will cancel. Okay, let's just rewind for a second. If you wanted to do this by elimination, but instead you were going to eliminate the x's, what other choice was available? You could multiply 2 and 3 by each other. You could multiply the first one by negative 3. There, there, there's, there's a bunch of choices there to go after. He chose one way. It might be the best way. I think it might be the best way, actually. But it, it, it's not the only way. Then you add. Hopefully, these steps are pretty straightforward. If you're out there and you're like, ooh, I don't know how to do that. Where is he getting that? How did he decide to add? Why did they multiply by 2? It's officially time to start to panic in this chapter. And by panic, we mean get to work, because that should be like, well, I, I haven't done enough practice, but I know what you're saying. I can follow that now. So then I got to take 125 and divide it by 5, and I get x equals 25. So I'll put that in a box. And then I'll sub x equals 25 into, I'm going to choose equation 1. And so I get 25 plus y equals 45. y equals 20. Now listen, friends, if that's confusing, why is it that I did that part so fast? It wasn't to show off, because I don't come to grade 10 class to show off. But why did I do that part so quickly? It's the same substitution. It, yeah, it's the same stuff we've been doing. And if you're having trouble with that, well, that's why I make videos. There is an elimination video out there. If you, wanna re, if you have to re-watch that and go, oh, I'm, I'm not very, I didn't have a very good weekend, I've got to go back and look those over. So I'm going to do those steps, not fast, but a little faster, because I want to get back to talking about word problems. That's the point of the lesson. Future teachers, you're like, stay focused on today's lesson, what the, what the important things are in today's lesson. Uh, should we check? I don't know, some of you maybe are good enough to go, I can check without writing all your fancy stuff here. 25 and 20 is 45. 3 times the larger is 75. Minus 2 times the smaller is, yeah, yeah, it works. I answered the question, yeah. This should do some kind of check, though, to make sure this is going to work. So I'll do different checks all day, but one check I'll do is, is the check I think sometimes you do in later grades. You just go uh, 25 and 20, yeah, that's 45. 3 times 25 is 75. Minus 2 times, yeah, it, it's good. And then a final statement. Wor questions that are in words should be answered in words. Therefore, the larger number 
is 25. And the smaller number is 20. I hope I didn't mess you up by calling it the three guess method. I only did two guesses. It's more like the up to three guess method. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Any questions there? All right, we carry on. More word problems. N another number problem. A number is five times smaller than another number. Five times smaller. Ooh. Four times the small number minus three times the larger is 33. What are the numbers? This, that, maybe the other one wasn't bad. This is the type of question that TV shows like to make fun of and Facebook likes to make fun of. They're like, oh, word problems. Okay, guess one. Guess one, guess one. First sentence. Oh, Mrs. Todd? You can keep the markers. No, I'm excited. No, you get to be in the video. Aren't you excited? No. 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 A number is five times smaller than the other number. Let's just talk about that. What's my guess? What could the two numbers be? We made up a word problem. It's her class doing word problems too. And in the word problem, we had to sol solve for Mrs. Todd's age and Mr. Todd's age. It was like five times Mrs. Todd's age. So in the word problem, oh, I won't tell you. Maybe we'll use the worksheet ourselves. I won't tell you what the ages come out to be. Where were we? I forget where we were. What was it? A number is five times another number. A number is five times another number. What guess would you like to do? By the way, we're not actually, I don't hope, I hope that's clear. We're not actually trying to guess the answer. We're trying to go, what are the two, what's the relationship between the two numbers? If I'm going to build the algebra, I got to know what's going on. Two numbers, one's five times the other one. Oh, I must tell you what she's wrote on her page. I, I've just peeked at her page. I'm sorry, I, you know, I, I don't love doing that. She's wrote this. I'm just going to write it up in the corner here. Huh? She's got the algebra of this question nailed down already. She's like, I know what's going on here. And I'll get to the last statements for that in a second. But if you're out there going, I know what's going on here, that's fine. So guess one could be maybe the first number's two, and the second number's 10. So we could go, OK, the two numbers could be, I've got to color code this, the two numbers could be 10, because 10 is 5 times 2. I've color coded that the wrong way around. Just a second. It's five times another number. Five times, five times another number. Okay? So my guess is that the numbers are 10 and 2. Maybe you already see how she came up with her equation. You went, oh, this one has to be five times the other one. I know it says five times smaller, but she's already reversed it around saying, okay, the one number's got to be that times five. Now, using that, then I'm ready to look at my second guess. My second guess, my second guess. Or sorry, my second equation of the first guess. Four times the smaller, so it's got to be four times the smaller, minus three times the larger the larger and what has it got to come out to if it's going to be right? Negative 33. Is it right? 8 minus 30, negative 25. But maybe that's enough for you to go, oh, I know what the second equation's got to be for it to work. And the color coding is helpful here to go, what are these two numbers that I'm guessing at? Is anyone ready to do the second equation? We got the first one, because maybe it's the, it's the one guess method. The three guess method might have turned some people out. I'm like, I gotta guess three times? No, you don't gotta guess three times. Guess, guess three times if that's what you need. Who wants the other equation here?
Now, I don't know if it's 4y minus 3x or 4x minus 3y, but I'm going to deal with that with the let statements. We're ready. We're ready now to go to the let statements. The let statements aren't just about communication. The let statements are about getting organized. Let x equal the smaller number. No, I'm doing let x equal the larger number. It doesn't matter. I'm just trying to match up with what Ellie wrote there. Let x equal the larger number. Let y equal the smaller number. And maybe, just maybe, you look at ones like this and you don't need my silly guess method. You're like, I got it. The two unknowns of the larger and the smaller number, I'm ready to go. The larger is five times the smaller. And you can talk like that without saying x and y. Say, oh, larger is five times smaller, x equals five y. Then what's the second one? Four y, four times the smaller, minus three times the larger, that has to equal negative 33. Is that what we wrote in the other one? Did you have it right? She did have it right. But you see how you might catch an error there and you go, oh, no, 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 it's the other way around. The x and the y have to go the other way around. I don't know, friends. I'm an elimination dude, but this one is just screaming to do substitution, isn't it? x equals 5y, it's already ready to go. Sub x equals 5y into equation 2. It's already set to go. 4y equals negative 3 times 5y, and that has to equal negative 33. Let me just make sure I sub that in right. 4y, no, not equals. I knew I wrote that too fast. There we go. There we go. 4y minus 3 of the 5y's. equals negative 33. So, 4y minus 15y equals negative 33. Negative 11y equals negative 33. Oh, whew! It's not going to be a fraction or a decimal. Divide by negative 11. Y equals 3. That makes me happy. Now what? Sub y equals 3 into which equation? Yeah, why would you put it in 2? Yeah, right? That doesn't make sense. 1 is ready to go. So this was a nice setup of a question. 5 times 3. I get... 15. Well, we better practice that left side, right che side check one more time just to make sure we got it down pat. I'm going to grab all this and uh, buy myself a little space. Future iPad people. That's nice. Anybody iPadding yet? You should see my grade 11 and 12 class. A lot of iPads out there. So it's fun to do math on an iPad. So over here, equation one. Left side, right side, uh, what was it? X equals 5Y, 15, 5 times 3, 15, yeah, equation 1 worked. Equation 2, left side, right side, uh, 4Y minus 3X has to come out to negative 33. Here's the big test. Is it going to work? 4 times 15, no, 4 times 3, minus 3 times 15, 12 minus 45, negative 33. Let's talk about why the check's so important on quiz and test. It's important because I give you marks for it. It's also important to go, did I make a mistake? It might be just as important, like, no, it's right. I don't have to come back and check this later. I can just 
put a big check beside this question, and as I'm going back over my quiz before I hand it in or test, I can focus on other questions because I know that one's right. One more thing, test strategies. Let's say it came out to be wrong. Look it over, do a quick check to see if you can find the error, then move on. You got most of the marks. Let's say this is out of five marks. You got four of them, maybe four and a half. Don't waste a whole bunch more time. Get on to other questions and come back to it. Just leave a little star in the corner saying, hey, come start and say, I'm going to come back and look at this at some point. That's how people get them in, themselves into trouble time-wise on math tests is they're spending too much time searching out one half mark and freaking out about one half mark. Okay. Any questions there? All right. Let's see what the next one is. And we'll try to do it without the guess method. Because I'm not addicted to the guess method. I just go, when in trouble... The guess method can help. Money problem. A yearbook committee must choose a printing company to print the yearbooks. Blue Heron Yearbooks charges $8 for setup plus $4 per copy. Miles Ahead Yearbooks charges $8,400 for setup and $3 per copy. How many yearbooks must be printed for the cost to be the same for both? Does this question have two unknowns? No, it doesn't have two. This is a grade nine question. We really were supposed to do a bunch of these in grade nine. There's only one unknown. Let X equal the number of yearbooks. It's only one equation. It's only one unknown. Why did I put this in here? Well, I think it's important to establish that the reason substitution and elimination even exist is because of two equations and two unknown situations. This is not that situation. Let me ask you this. What equation would you make for Blue Heron? How much are they going to charge using an algebraic expression? 4x plus 8,000. That's Blue Heron. Four times the number of yearbooks you need, but then they charge you another 8,000. What about miles ahead yearbooks? 3x plus 8,400. You see, it's not two unknowns. Can this question actually be done? I think the textbook does one of these using two unknowns. They go, let y equal the cost, and then they sub them both into to each. They do something like this. You could go, uh, y equals 4x plus 8,000, y equals 3x plus 8,400, and then they do substitution to get there. I don't know. It seems like a stretch to me to make this into a two equation situation, but you can. So it, when you, if you're doing one and you build two equations and then solve it, yeah, it's not wrong. But life's pretty easy here. You bring the x over, take the 8,000 over, and I get x equals 400, therefore they have the same cost for 400 yearbooks. How many more do we got to go? My brain tells me three more examples. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. All of those I will call reasonable examples. These next three, woo-hee. But they're all of similar type, actually. They may not look like it when you read them. But there's another type of problem we need to look at. And here's the other type of problem. Do you need more time for this grade nine example? Adam's piggy bank has 75 coins that are all dimes and quarters. So every time Adam gets a dime or a quarter, he puts it in his piggy bank. Okay? The total value of the money is $13.20. So he goes to that, ever seen one of those change things that are at the back of a grocery store? You dump it all in there, and it tells you the money. Actually, I've seen piggy banks before that can do it. Does anyone own a piggy bank that can do this? It, can, it keeps track of how much money is in there as you go. Yeah, as you put it in, it knows the size of the coins, and it's calculating as you go. So, 
Adam's been putting the coins in his piggy bank. The side of the, the, the piggy bank says $13.20, and let's just pretend. He'd have to break his piggy bank to open it up. But we can figure out how many dimes and quarters he has. What are the two unknowns? If you want to do this without my guess method, or if there's a question that you go, oh, this isn't too bad, I don't think I need Mr. Todd's guess method. Step one is, what are the two unknowns? How many dimes and how many quarters? Now, I'm going to do one step farther in this question and do better with the variables. We don't have to, let's get, let's get our addiction of x and y out of the way here a little bit. I think great choices would be here. Let d be the number of dimes. And if you're skeptical, you're like, no, Ms. Ta I want to do x's and y's. Can we just do x's and y's? Wait till you see here. Having the, the letters match up with the names of what you're talking about actually does help with the algebra a little bit. Let Q be the number of course. And let me just say that again. When you read a question like this, and I tell my grade 12s all the time, stop reading the questions for every detail. The first time you read it, just find out what the unknowns are. So I, if I was going to read this question, I'd go, uh, Adam's piggy bank, 75 coins, uh, dimes and quarters. I stop right there and go, dimes and quarters. Just a second. Let me get the let statements down. That is very helpful to go, let D be the number of dimes and let Q be the number of quarters. Now, remember, I'm trying to do this one without the guess method. Can anyone tell me the first equation of the situation? Yeah, there's a lot of word problems with that look very complicated, but the first equation at least Pretty straightforward, d plus q equals 75. And over here, I'm just going to make a little note that's going to help some of you. That's an equation about coins. That's the coin equation. Don't underestimate this little note I wrote to myself here. Because when you're really stuck on a word problem, you might need that to go, one type of thing I'm talking about is the number of coins. The other one's going to be the money equation. What's going on with the money? Well, now we're going to need somebody right on the case to be able to figure out what the money equation is going to be. Destiny. So fast. I tried to stop her, but she went so fast. 0 0.1. She said 0 0.1. I'm going to write 0 0.10 just in case somebody's Messing with the decimals. Writing 0 0.1 can mess people out, up a little bit. 10 cents times the number of dimes plus 25 cents times the number of quarters. That's all got to add up to $13.20. That's the little calculation the piggy bank's doing. Every time a dime gets put in there, it adds 0.1. Every time a quarter gets in there, it adds 0.25. And I'm going to write something that, again, will be helpful if you get stuck in a test and go, I don't know what the second equation is. I don't know what the second equation is. A little note to yourself might remind yourself that you're looking for a, an equation of a different quantity, probably. And this is the money equation. Now, it could be this whole chapter might fall into place with one example here. There's a, equation one, equation two. I'm going to encourage you to do this question by elimination. That's just experience talking. I think elimination is the way to go. But we need someone clever to tell us what to multiply the first equation by. I'm giving it away. Go after the first equation. You only have to do one in these situations. Anytime that first equation is x plus y or d plus q, elimination is going to work great. You only have to multiply by one thing. You don't have to multiply both equations. Just something clever. Oh, multiply by, what did you say? Negative 0 0.10. I think he knows what he's saying. He's saying 10, but he's going to multiply by negative 0 0.10. Let's just see what he did to make sure you think it's as clever as I know it is. He's, he's quite clever. He, he knows exactly what to do here. He's going to take equation 1 and multiply it by, he said 10, but 0 0.10. No, he said negative. Whoa, 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 whoa. Maybe you wouldn't have done negative. 
And when he does that, he gets negative 0.10d plus negative 0.10q equals 75 times negative 0.10. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't like that one. Uh, yeah, don't do that. I mean, do that, but get that number. Don't write down the multiplication there. Actually, multiply that out. 75 times negative 0 0.1 is negative 7.50. And I'm, I'm writing the 50, even though you might not. You might just write 7.5. 7, 7 And he's not going to do anything with equation two. And then first of all, can someone explain why that's going to work? Why is it that that's going to work? If, if you don't know why he did it, first establish that it's going to work. Then we can figure out why he did it. Why, why, does, it, why does it work? Yeah, adding's a little nicer. Maybe, maybe last week you're like, oh, I can do subtract, it's okay. If you did enough homework, you're like, ah, this subtraction thing. I'm gonna try and get it to addition if I can. And he handled that by multiplying by negative 0 0.10. Then when I add those, I get 0.15q equals, ooh, can I add these in my head? 570. going to divide evenly, it better. Quarters and dimes, you can't have half quarters, half dimes. This one's got to be, this one's got to be whole numbers. I'm really stressed. Quarters equals five dollars and seventy cents divided by 0 0.15. Type it in my calculator. 38. That's stressful. There might be other questions that come out to decimals, and you're like, okay, decimals, whatever. Might be fractions, whatever. But when dimes and quarters comes out to decimals, oh, no. Um, did someone type it in? How's my mental math? Is it good? 38. 38. Sub. Q equals 38 into equation one. See, I like these ones that are... Just the first equation is just two things added together. When that happens, you got a nice equation to work with. I get 38, <coughs> D plus 38 equals 75, D equals 75 minus 38, D equals 37. Therefore, there were 37 dimes and 38 quarters. Do you see how the, the letters using Q and D makes life a little nicer here? Q, quarters, D, dimes. You're not looking all over to go, what was the let statement? Those are, those are clever choices. I encourage you. You don't have to. You can be like, nope, I'm just doing X's and Y's. I'm much more comfortable with X's and Y's. Thank you very much. You can, but uh, using letters that are appropriate really does help. How would you like to check this one? Break the piggy bank open. Okay, he asks a great question. It's like, is anybody really doing this? Can you just open the bottom if you really wanted to know and count them all out and see what you had? The answer is yes. This is warming up for a chemistry question. There's a chemistry question like this. But we, yeah, you don't have enough chemistry yet to do the chemistry question. So we do something like this. Then when you get to chemistry class, you're like, oh, I can handle that. So yes, these are ridiculous. I, I, I don't dispute that but we are getting ready for later stuff. But I'm gonna go over to Desmos and type this mess in and see what I get. Desmos. Desmos doesn't do Q's and D's. I gotta go X plus Y equals 75, was it? And it was 0 .010 X plus 0 0.25 Y equals $13.20. Uh, Miss Todd, it not on the screen. It's not there. So you got to zoom out, find the lines. Where are they? Oh, there they are. 37, 38. Ah, it's good. Yeah? 
So Desmos is ready for you. You just got to zoom out on those ones. Any questions about the dimes and quarters? More time? Dines and quarters? Two examples, 25 minutes. Should be good. We should be good. And tomorrow's a work period for word problems. All the word problems that you did this chapter, you skipped over in your homework. I know what you did. You skipped over it, didn't bother doing it. That worksheet at the start, any homework tonight, lots of stuff to practice word problems. Students council has five thousand. Oh, interest. Interest. This is an interesting question. I said that like that for two reasons, to do my stupid joke, but also like, when I'm done this one, you might be like, you might be tempted to go, Mr. Todd, is this one on the test? The answer is yes. Look at it, he's putting a star beside it. He's like, yeah. Now, I'm sort of a give it away teacher, and I'm not trying to be kind. I'm trying to teach you about learning in classrooms. And sometimes a, a teacher will get all wound up by an example, and they get sidetracked and talk about it for about 18 minutes. They're like. Is my teacher losing it today? I'm like, no, they're trying to help you. They know this is on the test, so they're making an extra effort. Here we go. We've got to talk all about this. Students Council has $5,000 $5, to invest, and they hope to earn $330 interest in the first year. What's interest? Have you ever heard of interest? Here's what interest is. Quickly, let's say all of us, each one of us had $20,000. Wouldn't that be amazing? So we all put it in the bank. The bank doesn't keep it. The bank doesn't hold on to it. They lend it out. Ever watch one of those reno shows? They do a renovation and they, oh, flip this house. So how many of the five, seven, 10, 13, 14, 16, 18, 22, 23 of us put in $20,000. The bank has $460,000. They loan it to a contractor. They buy a house for $460,000. They do a bunch of work on it, three months, oh, turn around and sell it the next month for 570,000. They go back to the bank. And they say, and the, the contractor says, here's your $460,000. And the bank goes, no, no, no friend. That's not how this works at all. You don't owe me 460, you owe me 460 plus interest. You, I'm paying you to get some work done with my money. So, uh, but they, they, the contractor's happy. They're willing to pay them, say, $10,000 of interest because they made $110,000. That's just the cost of doing business. Then they come, the bank comes back to us and they give us, they give us each about 50 bucks to have our money. That's the whole interest system. It's how this economy runs. So interest is money that you gain or lose based on whether you're borrowing or saving money. It keeps the economy going. We don't do this in regular life. You come to me today and you're like, Mr. Todd, I forgot my lunch. Do you have any money? And I give you a $10 bill and you go down over to Sasso's and you get fries and Coke, chocolate bar. 10 bucks. Next day you come back and say, Mr. Todd, here's your 10 bucks. Well, I wouldn't go, oh, whoa, 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 what 10 bucks? It was 10 bucks yesterday. It's 11 bucks today. You see, most people don't operate on interest, but when you're dealing with the bank, they do, and it's good both ways. Because well, someday you want to buy a car, and you'll go and say, I got no money, but I want a car. And they go, okay, no problem. Here's 20,000, but when you pay it back, you got to give me 25,000 and they divide it up into monthly payments, and you don't really notice all the interest you're paying, which is a lot. But that's what keeps everything rolling. Meanwhile, they're giving your money to somebody else who gave them money, and it's just, the money's just out there somewhere. Okay, back to here. Some of the money will be invested in mutual funds, earning 9% interest. The rest will be invested in a savings account, earning 5% interest. First question, why wouldn't they just invest it all at 9%? Mutual funds are locked in. You can't get the money till the end of the year. You can't always invest all your money in locked in stuff or you won't have any cash. So sometimes you invest in long-term things and sometimes in short-term things. It's usually a mix of the two. So there are reasons why you do this. Well, after all that, what are the two unknowns in the question? The money that you make from the interest is an unknown. Well, let's, let's read the final sentence. If you're not sure what the two unknowns are, read that last sentence. It's often, not always, it's often laying there in the last sentence. It says, determine the amount in each account. There, there we go. Let x equal the amount.
in mutual funds. Let Y equal the amount in savings. There, that's an important first step. Let's get the two unknowns figured out. But this is a tough question, folks. Don't underestimate how difficult this is. So I'm going to go back to my guess method. Yeah. X is the amount in mutuals. Y is the amount in savings. Someone take a guess at what the two numbers could be. And I encourage you not to make, try and make good guesses. Just look at the first sentence. Students and council invested 5,000. What could the two numbers be? Ten and three does not add to five. Did you say ten and three or two and three? I know they invested 5,000. So a decent guess at the two numbers 1,000, 4,000. Could be 1,000, 4,000. For any students who were not present semester one to have their school photo taken, these reports are going to be available for students who were there for semester one. And I'm going to do a hybrid of the guest method. I think that's enough to go, oh, I know what the first equation is. Just seeing that. Does anyone got the first equation ready to rock and roll? Yeah, and I want to say that about grade 10 word problems. Lots of times the first equation is pretty easy. Lots of times like, oh, these are just, these two things added together equals 5,000. So you can just go and say, okay, x plus y equals 5,000. And this helps build morale too in these questions where you're like, oh, okay. Well, I got the first one anyways. Let me go back and work on the second one. All right. How much interest, you, you, you tell me the numbers. How much interest did they, was the mutual fund? What's that? Nine percent. So if this is going to be the right amount, that means nine percent of the 1,000. Ooh, I meant to color code it. Nine percent of the 1,000. Plus, what was the percentage on the savings account? 5%, so 0 0.05 times the 4,000. If those are the right numbers, and boy, wouldn't it be lucky if they were the right numbers. Holy, that would be amazing. That has to come out to how much total interest were they trying to make? 330. 330. Stare at that and see if you can come up with the second equation. It's complicated. It's a tough, tough, tough second equation. Yeah, 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 good. Let me just write it down. 0.09x plus 0.05y has to come out to $330. Now notice in my guess, it, it doesn't come out right. I think that comes out to $290. And you can see if I had to guess and guess and guess and guess, it would take forever. But this is enough, even one guess. But I encourage you, it's called the three guess method because don't feel bad if you have to do it three times before you go, oh, I got it now. I see what you have to do with the two numbers to algebraically build this. Back to here. Do you like substitution or do you like elimination? How many would like substitution here? Some people like substitution. How many like elimination here? All right, both are available. I did one just like this a minute ago with elimination. So we'll do this one with substitution, okay? All the way back to substitution. Uh, rearrange. One. 
What variable do you want to solve for? Which one's better to solve for, y or x here? Oh, a couple people shrugging, like, same either way. Eh? So it, it's up to you. I'll solve for y. And then I'll scroll down. And I'll sub y equals 5,000 minus x into equation 2. going to say much about the other steps. You look them over, and if you've got some arguments for me or some discussion, you let me know. Remember we labeled this as equation three back when we were studying substitution? So that's what happens here again. Y equals what was X again? Mutual. If you find that question difficult, I say, yeah, that's for reals. And hard to argue that that isn't a real world type problem. It's combinations of investments type stuff. But I pause for questions. Tell me. Questions? What's the hardest part then? Let me ask you a different question where you don't have to admit if you're having trouble, but just tell me what's the most difficult part in all that? Yeah, absolutely. By far, making the two equations. Now, the nice thing is this chapter has several types of questions. You'll find as you do more of them, practice more of them, like, oh, this is just like that one. Oh, this is just like that one. Study enough that you get to like, well, okay, I still have trouble with these types, but these types I'm good at, you know, so that. More time there? The clock is ticking on us here. Last one, right? Last one? Megan's Candy Store creates their own unique candy mixtures. They mix lemon drops that are normally $2.50 a kilogram. So if you walk down and try and buy lemon drops, you know what they're talking about here? You know the bulk barn where you can go in and just scoop out as many of a certain candy as you want? Uh, maybe Metro has, used to have these. You get to go in and just pick the candy you want. Yeah? Okay. If you buy lemon drops by themselves, they're $2.50 a kilogram. If you buy red rockets by themselves, those are much more expensive. Those are $5 per kilogram. What quantities of each kind of candy should be used to make a 50 kilogram mixture to sell for $4 per kilogram? This is almost chemistry now friends. Like this is right on top of doing a chemistry problem. Uh, okay, let's try and do it without the guess. I don't, let's see if we can come up with them. Um, what are the two unknowns? Unknown 
Right. Let L be the kilograms of lemon drops. I'm going back to using the letters involved because I know the equation that's coming is a little bit complicated. And so you may want to see this with the letters chosen carefully. Let Y, uh, no Y, let R be the kilograms of red rockets. And I hope these, see, I think this is the same type of question as the one we just did. Lots of times, the first equation, pretty straightforward. What's the relationship between L and R? Oh, I already see some people writing it down. What's the easy equation? I'm going to do my, back to my types of equation here. This is the kilogram equation. L plus R equals 50. And I'm not saying that always happens. Not every question just has them added together in the first one. Well, there's lots to do. There's lots of times like that first equation is just L plus R. And the second one's the toughest equation of the day. Well, maybe. This is the money equation. When building the mixture, Oh, Chris, was your hand going to go up there? Yeah. He's going to take a shot at it, folks. Here we go. He'll, he'll, he'll say it. 2.5L. 2.5L. Let me just get that down. 2.5L. He says, okay, multiply the L times $2.50. Go. Plus 5R. Hold on. Plus 5R. Okay. Equals 4. Equals four. Equals four. He's so close. I'm just going to put a bracket there. I'm going to think about it for a second, and I'll get back to him in just a second. You'll have a chance to fix it. Yeah. This is how much money the lemon drops are going to cost, 250 times however many there is. This is how much money the red rockets are going to cost, $5 times however many rockets. And this is how much money the mixture costs, which is $4 times L and R. Oh, good. L and R together. What are L and R together? 50. Let's go at it a different way. Right here, you have all you need to know about what the mixture is going to cost. That bucket of mixture, if somebody came in to buy the whole thing, would be 200 bucks. Where does that 200 bucks come from? $2.50 times the lemon drops, $5 times the red rockets. How many people like substitution here? Interesting. How many people like elimination here? Oh, you're substitution people. Interesting. Okay. Do it whichever way you want. I'll do both in just a second. My question, though, to you is, if you wanted to do elimination, what would you multiply the first equation by? Two point five could work. Negative two point five would be better. Five could work. Negative five might be better. So those of you who are substitution people, I just put that out there to go, ooh, maybe I'll take another look at elimination here. You try it out. Oh, my job to do both at the same time. So I'll make a new page where I'm going to do both when you can compare, okay?
How'd it go? Did you get 30 and 20? Take a look at my steps and compare. Find those little negatives, those little adding mistakes. I almost made an adding mistake in there. If you go back and watch the video, you'll see me mess it up for a second, then I fixed it. Folks, even though you have a work period tomorrow, it might not be enough time. You've got to attack some of this homework tonight. Um, sign works on a handout. So the homework's in a handout, but I want to go to the website. To make sure it's clear. And I'll go back to that at the end if you need those. What's today? Monday the 26th? The whole week's laid out there for you, but this is labeled Monday the 26th and Tuesday the 27th and all the homeworks in the practice sheet. There's like, uh, how many word problems? 14. 14. 5, 5 and 5. I like the 5, 5, 5 strategy. Do 5 tonight. Poach them. Go, oh, I'm not good at these ones, but I'll try these five. Five in class tomorrow, five for homework tomorrow night. Some, some strategy like that should get you there, okay?